Hello, Carol Taylor Carney here at Palane Arts, and I am with Caroline Carney here at Palane Arts, and we are doing the interview for Joyce Hagen and her beautiful piece of art. So, here are the questions. Here are Joyce's answers is read by Caroline, and we hope you all enjoy. And don't forget, your questions is written by you which she did say are better than the questions that I write, and so therefore she has to read them. No, I didn't say they were better. I said they were shorter. <laughs> They're shorter, that's They better. were shorter. Which all of you guys know is true. So I'm happy to play Joyce today. And I'm happy to play me today. I hope Joyce thinks I do her justice. She wrote beautiful answers, I'm sure she <laughs> will. So, hello Joyce. Could you please introduce us to your piece and tell us a little bit about how you made this? The work is titled, It's Your Turn. The machine pieced patchwork um, and backing are made of cotton fabrics that are either solid colors or grids, stripes, and dots. The batting inside is polyester. These three layers technically make a quilt. The quilt is embellished with anodized aluminum pieces that are machine appliqued onto the quilt, except for the aluminum square in the center of the quilt, which is sewn into the quilt. Um, the center of the geometric design is a traditional nine patch quilt design. For a few years, I enjoyed the rigor and guarantees of making traditional patchwork, patchwork, but I eventually was inspired to develop my own technique of building my pieces in an unplanned and unstructured way. I begin by choosing a fabric that inspires me, and then I assemble a collection of fabrics and embellishments that I, will, I think will complement that fabric. Sometimes the fabric that initially inspired the work is not even used in the work. As I mentioned, the center is a very traditional quilt block, although I've added a center square of anodized aluminum to the tradition. And then I just added the first border and selected, cut, and sewed the pieces together as I grow the design of that piece. It's a very organic process led by the colors and patterns of the fabric and the rhythm of the overall design. And you can see that. And I also want to point out that right here, this little, these yeah. little bits of purple are also uh, the anodized aluminum. Yeah. Oh, is, and so are these circles and these swirls. Yeah. A lot so, of texture in this. Absolutely. What was the inspiration when you started? Was it the same throughout or did it change as you went on? Uh, I like pieces and have created a few pieces that were inspired by games. Hence, it's your turn. Uh, my initial inspiration for this piece was to create a whimsical game-like piece. That inspiration did not change for me as the piece was constructed. I wanted the viewers to feel like they could play a game with this piece and to remember the board games of their past. For me, this piece makes me think of past games of Parcheesi, Monopoly, and Checkers. I wanted viewers to feel as though they could pick up circular pieces and use them to move around the board. I absolutely, absolutely understand that. Uh, me as Carol. Uh, <laughs> maybe when your circles land on the gold and gray squares and purple honeycomb pieces, players earn extra points. The spirals might be awarded as bonus points for a successful move. I think many different games could be played in one's imagination with It's Your Turn. Oh, absolutely. 100%. Um, and my next question to Joyce was, your title, It's Your Turn, references movement around or through, while it also references games, um, particularly board games. Can you explain how you show these references in this particular piece? Your interpretation of the title makes me smile. And as I mentioned, this piece was created with board games in mind. And while I did intend, I did indeed want the viewers to respond to the movement created by the striped and gridded lines, um, I never made the connection of the word turn as a directional move, movement. That's such fun because of course it is. At some points, the vertical and horizontal lines meet and create visual stopping points and your eye must take a turn to continue. At other places, the lines continue through and up and over or under the solid and dotted borders and no turns are needed. There's a lot of linear and grid interplay in the four pieced corners, lots of fun turns. Absolutely. And I also want to point out that um, I didn't ask this question, but 
I look at this and I see rainbows in these pieces. Mm -hmm. And then these pieces so much refer to like the starry night sky. I, I agree. Yeah. No, it's, it, it has has lots of, of little details that you can get lost in. Well, and also something else that I thought of when I looked at this is these, the screen yeah. uh, anodized that she used here and the screen that she used here mimic the idea of, for me, screen doors, uh, open windows, and uh, it reminds me a lot of that time when you're younger uh, and on like hot nights in the summer, you sit and play board games that was with exactly, your family. That was exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. Or um, you might be out on the porch with the light on with friends and um, the starry sky and you're sitting there playing board games yeah. along with your hide and seek and other yeah, and even these look like, like if you're looking at it from that perspective, these look like the sun, these look like the moon. Yeah. I think that's really fascinating. But back to back to Joyce. Right. Uh, this artwork is also made of fabric, therefore referencing uh, traditional quilt making. Could you comment on your choices, both traditional and non-traditional, in using this and making this piece of craft? Through the years, it has been important to me that my work hearkens a reference to the traditions of patchwork and quilting. But more recently, I've become less attached to that notion. My interest in creating with individual fibers and with non-traditional materials is guiding some of my newer work. I will always respect and appreciate the traditions of patchwork and quilting, but it has become less important to me that my work directly communicates those values to the viewer. Okay, so aside from seeing a quilt, um, I'm also reminded of geometric abstraction, particularly the um, uh, such grid artists as Dorothy Rockburn, Sean Scully, and Mary Helm Heilman. Um, are you familiar with these artists, and uh, do you think about the other artists for inspiration? Oh yes, I am inspired by the rhythmic pattern of grids. From the grids of basic checkerboards to the grids in wire fencing to the grids of woven plaids, they all inspire me. Traditional pieced quilts are all based in a gridded format, and I'm sure that was one of the reasons I first started making quilts. The artists whose works initially inspired me are Escher, Joseph, and Annie Albers, Stella, Kandinsky, Rothko, and Nevelson. Thanks for introducing me to Rockburn, Scully, and Heilman. I've been studying their work and will enjoy learning more about them. You asked about geometric um, abstraction in the previous question, and indeed, I moved into an appreciation for geometric abstraction after working with grids for such a long time. I have started to bend some angles and add some organic lines and shapes to some of my work, but it will take some more practice to become comfortable with moving into the style. I've started to take painting lessons because I think by working in a more fluid medium, it might be easier to learn how to create abstract compositions. That's a really interesting yeah, approach. That is, that is, as well as she already has a compositional approach in how she's putting this together. And, I, and you can see the fluidity by the swirls that she has, has started to Well, introduce. the strong juxtaposition between the circular and the square right. is a very nice compositional technique. So, Joyce, you're already on your way as far as we're concerned. Yeah, you're nailing it. Is there anything that you wish to add about your practice as an artist? I worked part-time as an artist from 1973 till 2000, in addition to being a stay-at-home mother to three children and working very part-time jobs. Then in 2000, I began working full-time as an administrator for arts and for arts nonprofit organizations. I retired as an administrator in 2022 and am now re-emerging as an artist. So I'm taking some time to learn and to try new things and to make updates and adapt my practice so I can continue in a medium which I love and address my current interests and inspirations, which I love. Yes, and I, I think that um, you're doing, you're, doing a beautiful job on all this. Um, I remember seeing the slides, the images you submitted, and this was the one that fit best into our show. But, but there's, if you get a chance to talk out, to check out some more of Joyce's work, it's well worth your time. Yeah, definitely should. Well, and also I wanted to take a moment to talk about how this is a very contemporary feel 
but it also has a feeling of home and coziness that you get with lovingly made things like quilts. Um, and so it's nice because it harkens back to a tapestry, it harkens back to quilts, and yet it harkens back to board games. Uh, and I really love that about this piece. Yeah, and I, I like right down I, Yeah, I love that she even has her little, little, little tag. Apparently we're really into tags today. <laughs> well, I mean, it was a, it's a very um, interesting way of signing your work. And this would not be an easy thing to sign. Yeah. So um, it really... Every detail is well thought out. Well thought out and well fit in. Yeah. So come see this at Pauline Arts from now through uh, July 16th. Which, you don't have much time, but please come see it. Hurry, okay. hurry, 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 hurry. It's worth it. Absolutely. Thank you.